while I was in law school, I actually got hit by a semi truck. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Awesome Inc.'s podcast, where we highlight people pursuing their definition of, you guessed it, awesome. So buckle up and get ready for some more success story adventures and failures from Kentucky's tech and entrepreneur community. Hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning into this episode of Awesome Inc.'s podcast. Again, I'm pretty pumped. We're sitting down with another Kentucky founder. This is Hashem of Legal Gant. Hashem and Carlos are two of the newest members of the Awesome Inc. Fellowship, and they're going to talk to you about their, their pretty revolutionary company. This is actually the first time I've heard of any, any tech company focused on the legal industry. So I'm pretty excited. And I know we just kicked off our fall cohort about two, two, three, two or three weeks ago. And these guys are, are pretty sharp. They pitched at five across earlier in 2021. And I'm really just excited to hear Hashim tell the story of Legal Gant and what problem they're solving. So with that, Hashim, can you go ahead and give yourself a little introduction and give us some background for both Carlos and you? Absolutely, Garrett. Thank you so much for having us on this podcast. I'm really, really excited to be here. Um, and, you know, we we're always excited to share our story with others um, to inform you all about, you know, how we got to where we are today. So to kind of a little bit brief background about me, I was born and raised here in Louisville. Um, I'm actually the son of two refugees. Um, my parents came to the United States in the early 90s from Iraq. And so, you know, growing up, you know, we definitely, it, I had to be the one that was kind of reaching for the stars um, and helping out as much as I can. Carlos was a Mexican immigrant. Um, he came to the United States in, his, in middle school, and he's always had a dream about building something um, as well and being a part of something larger and helping out the underrepresented communities. Throughout his first couple of years in the U.S., he actually had to, they had, his family had to deal with immigration lawyers. Um, so he understands this as well as myself, um, because my family had to deal with lawyers uh, in various parts. So, you know, to us, this hits home and we're really excited to be creating this platform to actually help the world. Yeah, super cool. How the heck did you guys initially meet? You guys sound like you have similar backgrounds from dealing with immigration and customs. So how'd you guys cross paths? So it's really funny, actually, Carlos and I met in undergrad. Uh, We were in orientation our first year at UofL. And he was in the undecided group and so was I. And for some reason, we just kind of really got along. And ever since then, we actually became best friends. Towards our senior year of undergrad, we actually had a period where we would start coming up with new ideas. And one of us would either say, this is not good or it was already created. Um, And we just kind of kept getting creative from there. And throughout law school, I really saw this you know, issue transpire while I was working at the law firms, you know, I was constantly getting bombarded with phone calls from clients asking for updates. And I may have not had the actual update themselves because I I was the law clerk and the lawyer may have been at the courthouse. So for me, it was, Hey, let me take your name and number down. I will reach back out to you. And that kind of really, to me, I, I knew there was a better way to do it. And that is kind of where I started thinking about Legal Gantt and how to create it um, and, and truly making it happen. Well, it sounds like we're going to get along because I was also one of those undecided <laughs> majors when I went to college <laughs> here at UK. So you mentioned that your background, you graduated, you went to legal school or law school, not legal school, not legally blonde. Uh, you went to law school. What is Carlos's background? So Carlos... Um, he is actually, he has a CIS um, degree from UofL. Uh, it's basically computer information systems. So right now, you know, he, he's been, he's developed a lot of software for um, multi-million dollar companies. And it's sort of like the client, um, client, client platforms. And so he has that technological background that I don't. And together, it's like a really good combination because I can bring the legal ideas and the understanding of the legal world. And he brings his tech side. Um, and really together we can really build a strong product and solution for the legal world. Yeah. Sounds like a one, two punch. <laughs> Watch out Mike Tyson. Well, and, and that's one thing too. Um, we actually have our chief marketing officer, Kate Hatter as well. And she brings in that digital marketing, the sales aspect to our team. So together we're kind of the perfect, uh, you know, group and, and we're actually really excited 
Um, we are also hired, we just recently hired a new software developer that's going to come in and work with us full time as well. So now we, our team is growing and it's really excited to see it because a year ago, it was just, you know, almost a year ago, it was just an idea. Um, and today now it has expanded substantially. Awesome. That That's really good to hear that you guys have had so much growth so quickly. So I know as we're going to talk, obviously, about your startup here in a second, uh, I heard this the other day, I think it was on a podcast I was listening to, that someone mentioned uh, the analogy that you go to, you know, whatever college or law school or doctor school, uh, or med school, not doctor school, <laughs> that you go to those to study that field, but you don't necessarily, you know, you don't go to law school to become a lawyer. You go to law school to know how to study the law. And then once you graduate and you work with a firm, then that's when you get your experience out becoming becoming a lawyer. So for you, as you went through law school and you've touched upon it with your background and Carlos's backgrounds of going through immigration, seeing some of the client facing communication issues, what was one of the things that you learned quickly in your career that you thought, this is a huge problem and I can make a difference by fixing this? So one of the biggest things was while I was working at this one law firm, we actually dealt with a lot of immigration clients. Um, and so these clients, they often have to have an interpreter or someone else to kind of translate for them, right? So they really weren't truly understanding the grasp of it on top of the fact that, hey, they may not have more than 180 days to be here in the US. Um, they may end up, you know, if, if the paperwork is not processed properly, they may end up having to, you know, we may miss a deadline. So for me, I thought that was troubling on my end just to see that. And so to actually make sure that the client was informed of that, it was going to be much bigger. And I knew that there was a better way. And that's where with Legal Gantt, we're actually going to make it where it is able to translate into multiple different languages um, to help those kinds of people. Mm -hmm. So Hashem, you mentioned earlier in this episode that your parents immigrated to the States. Carlos, business partner, immigrated here as well. So I know that you mentioned you guys became friends. You did the law school thing, which is awesome. What what really kicked you off into wanting to take action in the legal world? Like, what, what's the problem that you realized and said, if we can fix this one thing, that's going to help a lot of people? So that, that biggest problem that I saw was the continuous phone calls from clients asking us for those status updates. Like, they really, really... Are, you know, they, they really act like they really want to know what's going on. Um, and so for me, I thought there was a better way of informing them of their cases progress instead of just, hey, let me call them back, send them an email, send them a text. Right. It was I mean, today's technology. I mean, think about it. Think about the Domino's pizza tracker. Right. When you order pizza from Domino's, I mean, you can literally see when they put it in the oven, when it's on its way to your house. I mean, you can see all of these things. But for the legal world, that is, you know, the, I mean, legal services are not cheap. They're really expensive and they take a lot of time and, and hard work. So if we can't, if, you know, if we can offer something as simple as that into the legal world, it can really give, you know, someone a little bit more confidence and understanding of what's going on in their case and be able to truly grasp that entire aspect of it. So I did a little digging into your fellowship application. And again, this goes off of what you just talked about. So Legal Gantz is currently revolutionizing the legal industry. And one of the things I mentioned, I remember you mentioning from when you pitched, I believe it was February's five across from this past year. Yes. It's how the the legal industry is, is just lacking in technology and, and improving and advancing like most other industries. And so I found this in your fellowship application. Yes, I did some background digging. Uh, you said the the American Bar Association notes that the number one bar complaint, again, you just mentioned this, against attorneys is the failure for the lawyer to communicate with their clients. To me, that seems that seems silly because it's, you know, it's a one-way streak or I guess one-way communication streak, lawyer to client or vice versa. So I guess it means two-way. But with that being said, how are you guys realizing what you're, what you're providing is going to indeed change the communication breakdown? Yeah, Garrett, that, that's a really great question. Um, so one of the things is, you know, a lot, a lot of lawyers are really good at what they do. I mean, they're really, uh, they are very educated. They understand exactly what's going on and they know exactly what to do. And they may understand the steps super deeply, but their clients may sometimes not actually truly grasp it. And I'm talking about these little guys, you know, that may have an immigration case 
um, you know, that may be, you know, they may have had a speeding ticket or something in that form. They just kind of want to know what's going on and be able to understand that. And so while I was in law school, I actually got hit by a semi truck. Whoa. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it was, you know, thankfully we were traveling at about, you know, 20 miles an hour. Um, but when that semi truck hit me, um, you know, I, I actually developed a permanent neck injury. So I ended up having to hire an attorney to kind of help me dispute some of those claims and kind of recoup and put myself back in the same position I was in before the accident. And throughout that time, my lawyer was really good at what he did. Um, and I knew that he was one of the best in the industry. However, it sometimes I wouldn't hear back from him until I reached out. And that may be a few weeks and maybe a few months. Um, and so I knew that there was going to be, a, there was definitely a better way to actually stay up to date on my case's progress without having to continuously bug him. Right. I felt like I was bugging him when I was texting him, emailing him, um, trying to see, Hey, what do I need to do next? What's going on? You know, have you heard back from the insurance companies? What, you know, and at the time I didn't have a car. I was, I, you know, I had to get a rental and, so for me, it was really important to try to get that process moving. And I know that he was doing his job, but it just, I did, I couldn't visually see it. Um, my family was constantly asking me about it. And so if I would have had legal gain at that time, it would have actually changed a lot of aspects of it. I wouldn't have probably felt like I was bothering him anymore. Instead, I was just getting updated. I was seeing exactly, you know, I would have been able to see exactly what's going on, um, follow along with him and then just text him at my leisure without having to feel like, Hey, I'm bugging him, you know? Uh, so that was, you know, a really great experience right at the time that we were kind of really evolving with this idea that truly pushed it forward further for me. So one of the things you mentioned earlier is you, you mentioned the, the pizza tracker, not pizza, not pizza, <laughs> the pizza tracker analogy. How did you guys come up with that that idea for, for this product? So we wanted it to, we wanted to just provide the client with like a timeline aspect, right? It's just something that basically allows you to visually see what's going on and where your case is currently and where it's headed. Right. Um, and we thought the Domino's pizza tracker, cause one day, you know, we were just ordering pizza from Domino's and we we're like, wow, I mean, this is a great idea and it's so simple, but yet it feels awesome. You know, it's like, Hey, I know when my pizza is being ready. And then you know that you're not leaving 20 minutes early to go wait for the pizza or you're not leaving too late, right? You just can just time it right. You go pick it up or they have it delivered and that's it, you know? And if it's, if it can be that simple with pizza, why not be that simple with the legal world? I mean, and it, it saves a lot of time and energy and it improves the efficiency within the practices. I mean, so that's why we, cre we created it. This is totally off topic from actually talking about the, the, the legal product you guys yeah. are creating. What is your go-to Domino's pizza order? <laughs> I like the barbecue chicken pizza. Okay. I'm actually pretty hungry. So that's why I asked. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, hopefully you're someone who likes pineapple on pizza. Cause that is definitely, <laughs> it's definitely my wheelhouse. It depends on the day for me. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. So yeah, that's, that's super cool. And that's funny. I know we have a couple, we have a couple of posters around the Yasming space. And one of my favorite ones is from Paul Graham founder of Y Combinator that essentially says like you have your best thoughts in the shower. You know, you're not distracted. You're not, you're not thinking about something too intently and you know that Eureka moment. Oh man. So that's cool to hear you guys are ordering some pizzas and you thought, wait, this is, this is what we should be emulating mm -hmm. a, a, tr a tracking system that, you know, covers all the processes. So yeah, really, really cool. And Another thing I found in your fellowship profile that I think is just really good content because it helps me see the problem that you guys are solving and, and why you want to be a part of part of the really the Kentucky is a greater whole, the Kentucky startup ecosystem. You mentioned that if the legal tech industry is a seventeen point two billion dollar industry, and that's billion with a B, with a growth rate of around twenty eight, thirty percent per year. Uh, you know, in a couple of years, it's going to be like 25 billion, um, you know, like, or like 2024, 2025. So how we, how will legal Gantt stand apart from the, from the competition of maybe any other similar product during this major growth period? Garrett, that's an excellent question. Um, for us, our goal when we're creating our software is to push and strive for simplicity. Okay. Right now we've created our solution to where an attorney can actually begin using our software in less than five clicks. I mean, they can begin their free trial 
and they can test it on their own without having to, hey, let's set up a meeting. Let's do this. Let's do that. A lot of our competitors, they actually require meetings to walk you through it. There may be a 45 minute meeting um, and it's just so many more complexities. And a lot of lawyers, I, I don't want to take away their time. You know, our goal is not to take away their time, but instead to increase their time to actually be able to, you know, improve and to continue growing their business. Right. Um, and so for us, by making it simple, adding those simple features that exactly do exactly what we say without adding all these unnecessary bells and whistles, that is what's going to keep us separated from our competitors because our competitors try to, you know, when I talk to these lawyers, a lot of them are just like, hey, you know, I, I had to, I implemented this software, but it took me three weeks to onboard and now I have to do this and I have to do that. Right now we've integrated with existing case management systems that truly, truly give us the ability to kind of prevent that need of onboarding. And I know that some of our competitors offer that as well. But the thing is, it's our strive for simplicity and easy of use. I mean, that's one, you know, some of these, um, I, I was talking to a consultant the other day and I asked her like, so what made you come to us over our competitor? And her simple answer was your software is simple for the attorney and it's simple for the client. Um, you know, <laughs> like uh, the running joke within our, um, w w within our company is we want to make our software so easy. Even a baby can use it. Right. <laughs> Um, and, and so our goal is to really push that simplicity. And by doing that, it really, it, it leads more in favor for the attorney. Love hearing that again, that to me is, is so encouraging to hear one. Cause when I often think of the law world, I think of TV shows like suits or better, better call Saul, which, you know, those are TV shows for a reason. So it, it's just cool to hear that real, real people, especially from Kentucky are stepping in an industry. And they're, they're alleviating a pressure point. So yeah, that's awesome to hear. And again, especially coming from, you had a personal, personal experience. Uh, again, you mentioned you had an, an, an accident with a semi truck, you know, you should see the other guy nowadays <laughs> and, uh, thanks. Uh, but I'm glad to hear that a, that you're doing well and B like that led to where you are today and, and you're building a team around helping other people who are probably going or have gone maybe through worse or even better experiences than you went through yourself. And, you know, that's, that's awesome uh, to hear that you're having some, some really sound customer validation. And uh, again, as we're, as we're wrapping our time up together, wanted to ask, you know, a couple of things, what are you most excited about by being a part of the fellowship in this cohort? And then what are maybe the next two or three steps Legal Gantt is hoping to accomplish in the next calendar year? So I'm really looking forward to the mentorships. Um, I, I know how valuable the mentorships are about with Awesome Inc., um, because, you know, Carlson and I only know so much and it's always good to hear an outside perspective. Um, you know, Keith has been wonderful. Uh, we, we, we've been really, we've stayed in touch with him since we presented at the five across pitch. Um, so we're really looking forward to that and actually connecting with these other startups here locally, because realistically, if we can all grow together, everyone really succeeds and our entire community grows and expands. I would love it if we could make Louisville or Lexington or just here in this you know, the, the, the Kentucky area, the Kentucky region of making us being the next, you know, Silicon Valley. I mean, you know, I, I always, my goal was to always move out there and try to create a startup there. But in reality, when you think about it, why do that? But because you can start a company anywhere. Um, and I want to really improve the life for the generations to come. And, you know, Carl's is the same way. And so for us, I was born here. He, you know, he moved here. He loves living here. My family's here. His family's here. So it just fits well. And we really want to build on that and keep that excitement going internally, you know? And super cool. Well, want to say thank you so much for your time this afternoon. I know you got to get back to a lot of a lot of pressing stuff before the the construction next door <laughs> <laughs> picks back up. So again, thanks so much for for the work that your team is doing, and glad to see that you're part of the fellowship, and cannot wait to see you where Legal Gant grows and goes in the next year. Yeah, and, and Garrett, thank you all for having us, and thank you and Awesome Inc for having us as well. I want to I want to make a big shout out to Larry Horn at Amplify. I mean, this guy really, really, you know, if, if you're a startup founder and you've not been touched with Larry, you need to get in touch with Larry as soon as possible. He's very, he's been instrumental for our success. So, you know, reach out to these resources here locally. 
Um, and Awesome Inc. has also been wonderful. So reach out to Awesome Inc., you know, everyone. And just, if you have an idea, pursue it, man. Just go with it. It's going to take you somewhere. And you may, it's, even if it's a small little learn lesson, you still learn something new you didn't know yesterday. Well, that's it, guys. Thank you so much for checking out this episode of Awesome Inc.'s podcast. And another quick thank you to Lee Rosevere and a few members from our community who provide the music that you hear in this show. Lastly, give us a follow on Instagram, Facebook, all that jazz. Or even better, come on down to our space. Come be a part of our community and get plugged in. And let's start something awesome together. You guys rock. We'll see you next time.